And now I'm joined by a great friend of the show, Amanda Prestigiacomo of The Daily Wire. Thank you, first of all, for uh, joining us again, Amanda. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, I wanted to have you on because of an article you just wrote reporting on a really disgusting example of mob action against the founder of Papa John's Pizza. First of all, it has to do with using the word nigger, which, as we all know, we should never do. Mm -hmm. But it's more complicated than that. And he gave his side of the story. And thank you for reflecting that. So could you give our audience a little bit of a rundown of what happened? Yeah. So Forbes came out with a report on Friday um, that the founder of Papa John's dropped the N-word. Um, and Forbes basically said that he said nigger. But he was basically complaining that he couldn't use the word nigger. So the founder of KFC, uh, Colonel Sanders, called black people niggers. And this was on a conference call where they were talking about public relations and how he could help his public's image. He's paying this third party firm to help him with that. So he says that. And that's that's the kind of story that Forbes comes with. And everyone kind of lampoons him and he's forced into resignation. So he resigns because he said nigger. <laughs> Come to find out, he tells his side of the story exclusively with a local news station. And what happens is he wasn't complaining that someone got to say nigger mm. and that he then didn't face backlash and that he basically wanted to. No, no, no. He was being basically pressured by this third party who later extorted him to partner up with it seemingly with KFC. And he said, no, I don't want to. And he kept being pressured into, yes, I think this is what you should do. You should merge with them. He said, no, like this is about public relations, especially. I'm not going to be with, you know, someone who said, Nigga. and he gave that example of racism and said, I'm not going to partner with that. We're not doing it. He shut down their pushes to have him do this. So he basically felt provoked to say this term. So he said Nigga. during the conference call. And then about a week later, he says that this third party firm, it's called Laundry Services, it's like a PR firm. They said that they would have to, he would have to give them $6 million and the problem, the call would go away. They wouldn't drop it to the press. So they're basically blackmailing him, extorting him, um, and we'll totally drop this. He said, no, I'm not for sale. That's not happening. I didn't say in a derogatory fashion, this, right. is, this is blackmail. Like this, I didn't say when you have this dirt on me. No, I'm not for sale. It's not going to happen. So they went to the press. They went to Forbes. Forbes ran with it. They made it in that angle that he was complaining that he couldn't say niggers <laughs> and now we have this whole you know mob mentality taking a win and, and taking someone out for basically complaining about racism yeah something tells me that the the main movers and shakers in this were sjw white people in the first yeah. place right i mean what what is this how does this benefit blacks in any way Right. You see what I mean? It just it increases tensions. It makes racism into basically a, a sort of office politics football. Mm -hmm. And and I don't see how it benefits anyone. No, it was it was like a, a gotcha thing to paint someone as a racist and just to take them down and to make other people feel good. Apparently, this wasn't like a secret racist tape that somebody had. He wasn't just like spouting yeah. off the word nigger and like complaining about black people or something like that. He was discussing racism and how his company wouldn't be a part of it. So this yeah. is really, really gross, gross, gross stuff. This is a targeting. This is purely blackmail, and it has a lot of obviously political undertones to it. But this was an effort to, it looks like, thus far, to extort someone. Yeah, and you know, it reminds me, in my senior thesis in college, I used the N-word. Mm -hmm. And it was... I mean, it was it was a quotation, just like right. Papa John's founder, you you know, used right. it as a quotation. <laughs> right. And it was demonstrating a point because what I was pointing out in my senior thesis was specifically that we've become very emotive and supposedly sensitive, but that mm -hmm. sensitivity is actually cruel and tends to turn its back on actual crises and actual human rights abuses. And the example I gave, this was in 2013. It was long before the rise of what we now know as the alt-right and it was before a lot of this heated up. But I said, in, in polite company in any major city, if you pointed out that there is, because I discovered it, a thriving online culture that is pro-abortion and that congratulates Planned Parenthood for its success in curbing, quote, reckless nigger breeding, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then if you said that, Mm -hmm. The outraged response would be, <laughs> how dare you quote, say that word, even in quotation, rather than 
oh, let's look into this. Let's look at the fact that over 50 percent of blacks in, in New York City are murdered before they're born. Mm-hmm. Right. That doesn't concern them. What concerns them is shallow, insignificant things like speech. And like you said, heck, the conversation was about racism. Right. Given the topic, it's going to it's going to be a sensitive topic where you say things that, you know, you discuss. Anyway, it's obvious. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So so we're papering over actual racist activity or actual things that happen, like, for example, with what Planned Parenthood is doing. And now people are, are cheering this. Right. They're cheering that there are fewer black people, um, blacks being born because because of Planned Parenthood's efforts and how they target you know, minority communities. You know, we can't discuss that. But if somebody says it and they're quoting someone else and they're talking about actual racism and they're not using it in a derogatory sense, that person, we're the pitchforks because we're going after him. It's, I mean, it's a distraction. Yeah. Why do you think it is that they went after Papa John's uh, founder? Uh, because I want to point out that, that that they chose him as a target. Right, they have right. it out for him for some reason because others we all know, including Hillary Clinton reportedly, have lost their temper and used Nigger. as a derogatory mm-hmm. phrase. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and many others on the left have, have also just dropped the N-word. But why do, they, why do they have it out for him? So it's twofold. I mean, one thing is he's a, he's a uh, successful white male. So that puts a target on your back. You have no victimhood to fall on. Um, mm-hmm. You have no protection. You're going to be... I mean, my, my father is you know, a successful white male business owner. Like, he gets targeted all the time. This is just what happens. Um, and that's like low scale. So, you know, yeah. you see it higher up. Um, but also... He had the audacity to talk about the NFL protests. Um, this was in, oh. uh, yeah, so, you know, this kind of comes full circle. So he mentioned that, you know, this kneeling, these protests were kind of killing his sales because it was like a PR stunt, right? This was all about Kaepernick and the NFL took a major hit and he partners with the NFL. So he yeah. took a major hit and he he said that um, in an interview or something and the, the backlash was huge. All of a sudden he's a racist. He doesn't understand the protest. He hates black people. He's using them for profit. So he was our target because of that. And then just naturally, because he's a white successful male in this country, um, you got yeah. a big target on your back. You know, it really gets me. Uh, one other thing about this that really, really bothers me is that I don't know. I don't believe that anyone believes he's racist because this is yeah. a guy who's been in public life for decades. Right. He has numerous friends of various races, I'm sure. He works with them. Why are we all—I mean, it, it takes an incredible amount of cynical dishonesty mm-hmm. to just decide, I'm going to pretend this person's racist in order to destroy him. The, yeah. And this happens every week. It happens all the time. Like, that, that's what—the media has become that. Um, we see it more and more. They're out to destroy. Like, they are out to destroy. And they will find anything, you know, conversations between people, take things out of context— for, the, for instance, this call, totally taken out of context. He was quoting somebody else and using it as an example of racism, but it doesn't matter. You say the word, it's over. And this is not just about race. I mean, we see this in, in every situation. The Me Too movement will come yeah. after people for things you, you've said that are totally innocuous, yeah. um, but they'll flip it, they'll turn it into something to destroy you. I mean, that's what the left does. They destroy by nature, and it kind of carries its way over into individual people as well. Right. And they don't destroy just anybody. I mean, no, no. Uh, they no. Don't, there, there are plenty of people. You deviate from the narrative. You deviate a quarter inch. You're a little off. Yeah. You don't have to be like fully left wing. If you just deviate a little bit, you are a target. How dare you talk yeah. about the NFL protests and not be 100 percent on board? It's you know, over. Yeah. You know, I sometimes think that this has been a very successful long term strategy of cultural Marxists, mm-hmm. because for many decades, they've been the ones who have said, Obscenity laws are awful. Yeah. Um, anything goes, especially mm-hmm. in, in the entertainment industry and in art. They have been the ones pushing the envelope. Yeah. And I, I almost think that they did this to create a dragnet yeah. by which to catch people. It's sort of like when you have way too many regulations. Glenn Beck used to point this out, that a number of, uh, there, there's actually a number. It's sort of like how many spiders we swallow in our sleep throughout okay. our life. Mm-hmm. Almost daily, we are committing technical felonies, some claim. And right. so the point of that is that so that you know, sinister intelligence agencies can s- decide, oh, I'm going to destroy that person because mm-hmm. he's offended us in some way and uh, he's a threat to national security or whatever. We always know that we can get him on something. And right. now the you're, left you're, has we've done already the- committed these crimes, so we can just pick and choose who we want to prosecute is what right. it is. And the left has done a similar thing, I think. I worry that they've basically they've made us feel free to act horribly 
and to say horrible things. <laughs> and people on the left, God knows, they say it all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, horrible things that they shouldn't be saying, including racially controversial things and sexually controversial things. Mm-hmm. So that if you have a Dave Chappelle who goes against the narrative, they can maybe take him down. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like they lower this bar so everybody kind of plays at this level. And then now that everyone's already passed that bar, now they can pick and choose. And this happens culturally, like you're saying. And, yeah. and we've seen it a ton with the Me Too movement. Um, yeah. that, that's a real easy way to pick people off one by one. Um, speech. I mean, I mean, we see like colleges and, you know, um, leftists are basically Puritans now. Um, you know, they're like censoring art, for example. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very, it's very uh, insane how, how things have, have really flipped and how they're um, really going after people for, for things that they used to be okay with. In fact, that they encouraged. Yes. In fact, that might be an explanation of much of the double standard phenomenon on the left. Mm. This Mm -hmm. is really permissible. In fact, we encourage it. And then at the same time, we'll also come and bite people in the spine. Mm-hmm. If they ever turn against us, and we'll we'll bite them for things that we said was were were okay just moments ago. Maybe that's yeah. the that's the ultimate explanation of leftist double standards. Yeah, it's pretty uh, effective, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you very much for this conversation. These are important insights, and of course, I encourage all of our viewers to follow Amanda. Amanda can be found online at at Amanda Presto mm-hmm. on Twitter. And uh, also her work is over at the Daily Wire. She's probably the Daily Wire's best reporter, right? Probably. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> no. thanks again for joining us. I look forward to having you on again soon, Amanda. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Racism. We are not cured up. Clearly. Uh, and 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 it's not just a matter of uh, it, it not being polite to say nigger in public. <laughs> What's your reaction to the president's use of the word? Sometimes you do have to use provocative language. And I think that, as, as you say, the word is extremely provocative. However, what he said in the context that he said it almost was important. Mm-hmm.